Hi, everybody. This is Jane Chai. Uh, sorry, I, I'm doing it off of my computer again. I, I, I'm trying to figure out if I can get a better uh, quality. I cleaned the little uh, video, uh, sorry, the camera on it. Um, but I'm having a suspicion that the audio is probably really horrible. And uh, I'm going to have to try to figure that out because um, I've got to get out of this low budget type of behavior with it. Um, uh, I've got a I've got a computer uh, that was given to me by my ex-girlfriend uh, back in 2011. So this computer that I'm using, um, even though it was top of the line at the time, it's got a touch screen at the time and, and all that, uh, but it is, um, it's, uh, it's, getting, it's getting there. It's getting there. Uh, it, it, it's doing what it is. I'm so used to doing everything on my, on my, uh, my cell phone that I just figured, okay, well, whatever, right? Um, and it's easier this way too, because then I don't have to move everything all over the place. Uh, so thank you very much for joining me, everybody. Uh, I really appreciate you um, taking the time on Saturday. I do know that it is one day before Thanksgiving here in Canada. And um, oops, I better turn the sound off because that's, uh, that's an amateur move on my part, I apologize. Uh, I am turning the sound off, there we go. Sound might go off on my, uh, my cell phone, I'm double, I'm backing it up just in case, and uh, I'm going to see maybe perhaps I can sync up the sound. I'm going to try to do something quite uh, technical uh, for me. I don't know if I'll be able to do it or not, but hey, who knows, whatever, right? Okay, um, so happy Thanksgiving to all of us in Canada, and uh, happy non-Thanksgiving to those of you who aren't. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm going over to some friends uh, tomorrow who have invited me over. They have a huge dinner. Uh, with all their friends, so it's gonna be like 17 people there. Hi Debbie, hi Mike. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, it's gonna be kind of a, 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 a fun time, so I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Okay, so today is October 12th, 2019. This is episode number 18. Yes, since September 24th, I've been doing this now, um, uh, 18 uh, episodes, and I will be going over topics. Uh, I'm going to choose a couple of them, or if you guys want to, uh, you know, everybody out there watching, if you want to choose which ones you want to watch uh, or want me to talk about, I can do that instead. I might probably go to this, uh, the second one, which, so the first one is Velcro, Velcro Dog, right, which is, which is uh, r relational to also why dogs follow you into the bathroom, right? Why do dogs follow us into the bathroom, right? Why, you know, we get up, go to the bathroom, and our dog is right beside us. So I want to answer that. And then I also want to catch up on some viewers and members' questions and see what it is that, um, uh, that I can catch up on a few things. And if you are a member of my group, uh, Reactive Skittish and Dangerous Dog group, you can post a question of uh, behaviors with your dog like I did yesterday with Sarah and the, and the other days as well. And then we can go over it piece by piece, paragraph by paragraph, and break down the psychogenetic structure of your dog's psychosis, right? Why your dog is, uh, for people who have reactive dogs, why, why that's happening. Everything that I do is only to do with reactive dysfunctional dogs, dogs that are more than a moderate aspect of dysfunction, but everything that I have done because I've worked with the predatorial dogs, it all trickles down. It all makes sense. It all, it all leads into something. So we will get into that part. And let me just see here. Um, Okay, so um, I don't know how long I'm going to go. Last, uh, last night, I, I went almost two hours again uh, because um, for Sarah and her husband and uh, their uh, little dog, uh, Prince, in regards to his behaviors and abandonment issues, which was quite uh, upsetting, um, very upsetting. Um, but we're going to get into some of the viewers, uh, members' questions of mine, and we'll go on there. I want to... Um, Thank the people who have been subscribing to my YouTube channel. If you haven't done so yet, please uh, help support my work by just simply going to my YouTube channel and subscribing, and, and that's pretty well it. I'm not asking um, for uh, for you know money uh, for for doing that. I'm not putting any ads on. I'm going to try to keep the ads off. My website website is completely free of ads. There's no there's no pay site on my website uh, whatsoever. Um, maybe in the future, you know. Six months down the road, I might get a sponsor. If not, I'll just keep doing what I'm doing and just uh, go on there. Um, so that's definitely something I'm working towards. As well as, uh, please follow me on Twitter at arf, arf, bark, bark. Please follow me on Instagram at arf, arf, bark, bark. Just that the more numbers I get, the more likely that I can spread out the word more so. And when you start hearing the stuff that I'm talking about, those of you who have been following me from day one or have had the time to binge all my uh, my episodes, I mean, now we're at 18. So that's that's like 22 hours worth of, uh, of stuff to watch. 
and listen to, you'll see that everything starts coming back into a circle, full circle, back to the codependency aspects of dogs. As I've said before, dogs are overt codependent. They absolutely love expressing the love that they have. And uh, human beings, we are co uh, well, we're secretive, right? We're covert codependence. We don't want to show people what we're doing. We don't want to show people that we're happy. A lot of us don't like to do a lot of uh, PDA, public displays of affection. But I say, hey, you know what? If you're in love with something or someone, just show it, right? You see guys who are very happy about their sports cars and they're just showing it all off, um, you know, and it's like when you, you, uh, you know, you're going out with somebody that you love, it's the same thing, but it's not materialistic and we want to show that. And the most important part of showing that love that we have is the easiest way is to show it to our dogs. Uh, another thing I'm going to try to do, and I hope it doesn't happen, but I think it, I might be able to do it, is to do a screen share, and that's why I'm doing it off the computer now. I might be able to screen share, and if I can screen share, then I'm going to try to go to a, um, uh, a YouTube video of mine of one of the dogs and, that I've worked with and go through that. So I'm going to try to go through everything and get to that point. And if I can do that, then we're golden. All righty. Um, Okay, so I want to thank everybody, and as well, I do take donations. Obviously, I have a fundraiser, um, and the fundraiser is through Patreon or GoFundMe. And both of those fundraisers now are um, I have like I think uh, GoFundMe has two hundred dollars in it now. I want to thank the th uh, three people who donated. And once I hit two hundred fifty dollars, then you will see me posting on line saying, you know, if you have fixed income, you can qualify. You know, into the post by posting video or information about your dog and then us, the public, the viewers, uh, my followers will choose who I work with. So I won't have any choice. You can bring whoever you want. It doesn't matter how extremely dangerous the dog is. I will work with that dog for everybody and um, you get to see what happens. And uh, so, like I said, I've never turned down any dog, no matter how dangerous, no matter how predatorial, uh, and you will see me working with them. Absolutely no treats, no medication, nothing at all. And it's putting my word behind what I say. And of course, you know, everybody says, well, you got to go to a, a science-based trainer and you want to go to a, a trainer that's credentialed and all that stuff. And then right after the, the same part in a, in a somewhat duplicit statement is like, well, it's an unregulated industry. So you want to go to someone who's credentialed, but then it's a self-credentializing industry. But there's no credentials because it's not self-regulated. So, I mean, it's not regulated. So you're creating credentials out of thin air. The old days, 20 years ago, when I was growing up, something happened with somebody's dog. The guy, the, the owner, the family just dealt with it. And they figured out how to work their dog down. Now it's all this treat training aspects, which is fine for basic aspects of trick training, obedience, etc. When it comes to dysfunctions, moderate to extreme to predatorial, right? The dogs who are tending to kill people, uh, like as in they stalk you and to kill you, uh, those dogs, uh, you know, treat training, as I've said before, counterintuitive, doesn't occur, food does not occur anywhere in the entire canine species. Not once will you ever see one dog or wolf or hyena bring a piece of food over to, the, to another adult dog and go, here you go, yeah, eat this. Maybe when the mom's taking care of the puppies, but definitely not anywhere. So uh, talk to any behaviors, talk to Karen Pryor, talk to Ian Dunbar, talk to uh, Rebecca Ledger, Claudia Richter, talk to any rescue organization um, that understands dysfunctional dogs. Treat training is a crutch. It's an anthropomorphization of a human expectation of compliance. And because it works for us, we get a bonus at work. That type of incentivization does not occur in dogs because they are not premeditated. Dogs are consequential to the environment, the behaviors, et cetera, et cetera. That's why I say there's no such thing as trigger stacking or, yeah, anyways, okay, we'll go on. I, I'll, it's a Saturday. I'm going to try to be a little bit more nice and not go on my rant again about like I did yesterday. But again, uh, you know, just reinforcing the statement, nowhere in the entire canine species does food exist, which is why what I do is extremely successful at 100%. And it's 100% successful across the entire board from just a mild little traits that are going. I, I have people who are hiring me now where they're saying, well, we think there might be something wrong, but we're not really sure. But even if it, there isn't, we'd still like you to come in, James, uh, you know, and they're paying full rate. We'd like you to come in and check out our dog. Just let us know what our dog's emotional and psychological content is. And then I get there and I show them what the issues are and I show them what can potentially happen because of the behavior, the personality of the dog, right? You know, you have somebody who is um, 
you know, prone to kleptomania, right? Prone to stealing stuff. You want to be able to catch that before it happens, before it becomes something where it becomes a psychological dysfunction, a psychosis. So that's what I do with their dogs. So even uh, a couple of people in the past year, I'll, I'll post up some stuff. Ivy, who is uh, who I was talking about the other day, where uh, she's got a puppy, a husky, who is not paying attention, running away from her at the dog park, and and getting uh, uh, somewhat uh, overly uh, zealous in her energy, uh, his energy, with uh, other dogs and so forth like that. Uh, she remarked the next day that people at the dog park were saying, "Wow, your dog is listening to you now," and, and all that. And there's no treats, there's no medication. If I ever want to help somebody who is having a tough issue, I will help them. I will not go and say, let's go get some beer and, and scotch and, and get drunk, et cetera. Let's just talk it out. Why, what's going on? But right? we want to do it sane and clearly. And then afterwards we can figure out and then we can party afterwards. But let's get the, let's, let's get the dysfunction dealt with. With dogs, the same thing. We want to get the dysfunction dealt with with the dog on the same way that they do in, in the wild, primitively, is they just create that communication at the dog speed at one tenth of a second. I, I'm sorry, I gotta keep my hands down here as I keep um, keep bringing it down. I wore a short sleeve shirt so you can see all my scars and all that stuff that I have, some wounds and everything like that that I have all over my body. Um, and and I, as I said, I'm always deathly afraid of being bitten by a dog. Um, even giving them a hug, I always ask my clients to give their dogs a, a hug to reset them in a certain format that I tell them to. And when I try to show them, I'm always very, very afraid. And uh, I've been very fortunate um, not to be killed. It is an extremely fearful idea that goes through my head um, on, a regular <clears throat> on a regular basis. And it's just something that, uh, you know, for what I do, uh, I don't want anyone to try to do this. Just listen to the nuanced aspects of what I'm talking about. Keep talking about the codependency. It'll start making it more and more sense to you because again, Scientists are saying why are dogs cohabitating with human beings and it's part of the 10,000 plus years of evolution. The reality is I debunk that somewhat amateur science that's out there is the fact that a dog that cohabitates is through the emotional isomorphism, which is what I'm terming it as in regards to two different types of genetic structures that are having somewhat similarities and traits, which is the, i.e. the emotional aspect of it. But when you were to take to, if you were to take an actual uh, uh, a wild dog into your home, a dog that was once living in a home and is now wild, domesticating that dog is difficult. Now take that wild dog, the dog that was once living in your home, leave them outside, let them procreate. Three generations in, the domestication gene is completely gone because it doesn't exist. But you can take a dog that is wild, bringing them into your home, and you can indeed domesticate that dog, even though it doesn't have any genetic structure in regards to the cohabitation part of it, right? And like I say, you look at the wolf, and people who do wildlife uh, rescue for wolves, they're able to take a wild wolf and literally domesticate it. And so how is, how, you know, some guys can, right? I mean, I would probably like to do that if I had the opportunity. Um, uh, I've worked with alpacas and cats and so forth like that. Yes, cats, of course. Yes, okay. So same thing with cats. You can tell by the nuanced behaviors. You can tell that by all the type of behaviors on the animal. And um, so, again, you see people who are taking the wild wolves and they're able to domesticate them somewhat and create some sort of cohabitative aspect of interaction. And um, it's just really addressing it at the dog or the canine speed of processing, which again is at one tenth of a second. All right, so I'm gonna uh, scoot on to the next thing here, so, so I don't uh, go through. Uh, Deborah, if you're online, or Susan, Susan and Deborah, uh, Susan is um, uh, Deborah's friend who walks Leo. Um, uh, uh, let's just see. Okay, if you're online, please say hi. I want to see if it's okay to mention uh, the email that you got uh, that you sent me. Excuse me. Um, uh, regards to Leo, Leo's the uh, cute little guy who. Uh, you know, nine years of age was attacked three times by other dogs during his lifetime. And yesterday I was talking about the uh, German Shepherd that almost um, attacked him because of the owner, et cetera, right? And the responsibility that is inherent in our care and control of our dogs. Okie dokie. So um, we have a choice of today. And, you know, there's a few, a couple of people watching and all that stuff. So definitely feel free to, to make the comment. You can be the ones to do so. I don't know if I'll be able to see the comments. Uh, that's the problem here. Um, 
the choices are interpretation or misinterpretation. That's regards to why does a dog suddenly seem like they're okay with another dog and then they get into a fight. Uh, the aspect of negotiation, um, Velcro dog, why dogs follow you into the bathroom, and why dogs take your socks. So these are all interrelated in the aspect of the dysfunction and the, 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 the psychology of the dog. Again, goes back to dependency, codependency. And every dog, as I say, has a variant aspects of codependency, which is the primary aspect that we wanna focus on with our dogs, but also interdependency and interdependency. So interdependency is when the dog is just basically just stuck to you, more than a codependent, can't survive without you, kind of like a child and a, a young child and a mom or dad. And then the other part is interdependency, which is just essentially like interstate travel, where you go into different states, different provinces, etc. is the ability to socialize with other dogs, other human beings outside the dog's immediate as family, right? The immediate aspect of their understanding of their, their familial nucleus. Um, as you can tell, I'm trying to not get too complicated in my descriptions because then I'm going to get ahead of myself and then I'll start talking in a way that nobody's going to understand. And like it was in the beginning, people were like, could you just slow down and kind of make it simple for us so we can follow you? You know, we're, we're here on the ride and all that. Um, and uh, it's just, I'm so enthused by all this stuff. So I, I just want to do that. I'm going to also want to say a, a shout out. I want to say thank you to Falcon Essentials and the link is in um, uh, the description, Falcon Essentials. Um, Alexander, uh, anybody who is um, uh, interested, who's living in the Vancouver area that is looking for uh, some, some great deals on food and so forth like that, they, they provide stuff that is um, uh, through a liquidation aspect of it. The food is all great. It's still in, in, the, in the current aspect of it. Uh, the, the group, Facebook group, I put the link in as well. Uh, phenomenal, but they just donated a bunch of cat food, actually. That's why the cats are in my mind today. They donated a bunch of cat food. So if anybody's actually looking for a couple of bags of cat food, you know, I've got five bags that I'm willing to give away for free. Obviously, you can come and pick it up. Uh, it is a high-quality uh, cat food, actually. And I was like, wow, this is pretty cool. So um, absolutely, you know, pay it forward. It was donated to me by Falcon Essentials, and I just took like five or six bags, I can't remember. Um, but I have at least five bags I'm happy to give away to anybody who has cats. And uh, we prefer that if somebody's on a fixed income, that would be great. And we can do that and be awesome. Um, I also wanna uh, do a bit of a shout out to Suzanne Fentner with uh, Great Dames of Our Hearts. Um, you know, I accept your apology. Uh, I do hope you feel better. I do hope you get, uh, get better. And I, and I uh, trust that you can get that dragon under control soon. Um, it's been a, a very difficult journey and uh, I definitely um, am expressing my love to you. I really do hope you um, can get a hold of it. You've sent me some great messages and all that stuff. And um, you know, I really hope you get uh, stable, uh, very concerned about it. And um, you know, keep your, uh, keep your spirits up. It's really good. There are people that are listening to you and uh, I'm definitely one of them. So um, I wish you well and uh, you know, um, yeah okay all right so um and then we got some viewers questions uh members questions as well uh, from my reactive dog group but i will go into this part here so does anybody have any choices or anything that they want to talk about in regards to interpretation misinterpretation negotiation velcro dogs why your dog follows you into the bathroom or follows us into the bathroom or why dogs take your socks off oh i mean take your socks <laughs> sorry take your socks off some dogs might all right okay well um I can't read the comments because I'm comment dumb. Um, oh, gosh. Oh, an event log. Okay. All right. Uh, I don't know how to, you know, I apologize. I can't see any comments whatsoever. Okay. I, yeah, I can't see any comments whatsoever, so I, I apologize for this. Um, let me just see if I can go into my main page. And uh, um, uh, let me just see if I can go to my main page. I want to th say thank you to uh, MJ and uh, Betty. I'm not gonna use your last names, uh, but I wanna say thank you so much for your support, uh, for what you've been doing, uh, some of the comments that you've given me of support here um, as, I, as I work towards trying to uh, get some help for Suzanne. Um, she's a, she runs great games of her hearts, like I say, uh, I think she's in Arizona, whatever it is. Um, we're just trying to get her some help, and um, you know, just remember that you're not alone, okay? You're not alone. Hi, Gina, how are you? Uh, peace, love, Danes. Hi, nice to see you. I, I, I figured out how to see the comments now, I think. I'm not sure. Um, 
I, I'm switching to another screen. So uh, if it looks like I'm not paying attention, it's because I'm not, because I'm looking at, uh, but Gina, hi, how are you? And um, uh, let me just see if I can figure this out. Oh no, uh, you know. Um, okay, so I'm bringing it out there and, oh, okay. Hi, Mary, how are you? All right, so I see Gina and Mary. I'm gonna switch back and forth to the comments and all that stuff and then go from there. Um, and thank you so much. Um, uh, okay. Okay, cool. You can see that. Okay, cool. All right. So I'm going to go back to my own screen. That's why you see the flash every once in a while and all that. I'm going to talk about why dogs follow us into the bathroom. How's that? Is that, that's pretty cool, right? That's the one where, okay, does anybody have any idea why dogs follow us into the bathroom, right? Because he's like, oh my gosh, can I not go pee in, in private, uh, right? Or can I not go you know, number two, I mean, I, you know, I'm not going to swear. Can I not go number two in the bathroom and all that stuff, right? You, and so you see the fact that if you're sitting on the couch and you, you get up and your dog really knows that you're going to go to the bathroom for whatever reason and they start following you, like if you live in a small uh, place like I do, uh, like it's a small old house and I live in here, um, you know, my dog knows when I'm going to the bathroom because I, oh, my five dogs, right? And I have three to four of them following me other than Sammy, who only has two legs, so she just goes, I don't know, right? There's no need. And the interesting thing is we don't, we, we, right? You, you look at, you go and Google it, even as we're talking, as I'm talking. The, 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 the issue about this, why is dogs following us? And it's never been written down. Nobody has any understanding of why dogs follow us into the bathroom. I'm just going to double check comments just in case. Why do dogs insist on staying in the bathroom, Pamela? Right? And Pamela, I want to say thank you so much as well. Uh, for your uh, your messages of uh, support uh, a few weeks back as well you know um, it's been just something where I just decided you know I've had so many people promise me the moon uh, you know promise me to you know help me you know a TV show all this stuff like like all these things right because I help them and they're like they're, they're discussing you know I've had CEOs of international companies as well and then they just trail off because once they have all the help and their novelty of it is over then they just disappear right so that's why uh, Pamela, as I said, you know, I'm just, I'm just done expecting people to help me, and that's why I'm doing a vlog. And you know, um, thank you as well, uh, Gina, for that. Um, so that's it. Okay. So um, I am. Wa so what's happening is, and I'm watching myself. Oh, I can't do this. I'm going to make myself dizzy. I'm actually seeing myself on the other screen, and I'm delayed by literally two seconds, and I'm going to make myself dizzy. So <laughs> I'm just going to stick to here. I'll flip back and forth. Um, and you can see I'm much more like, you know, connected to, to broadcasting now. I'm not introverted as much as I was before. I feel, uh, I just, I just, I love sharing what I've learned. And I think because of the high stress of work that I've been through, um, it's just nice to be able to share this. It's just nice to be able to share how much fear, how, 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 how extremely scared I've been for, for months on end. And uh, I always have said to people, it's like living with, uh, with uh, Nero, Walter, you know, it, it's been like in the beginning, like living with a serial killer and a lion all rolled into one. And the fact that uh, a serial killer, you don't know when they're going to kill you because they look normal and they act normal and they're quote unquote unpredictable. And the lion aspect of it is because the ability and the history of either those dogs or some of the other ones here, uh, the Danes, the Great Danes. Um, their history is so significant that um, the pictures I've seen, the graphic photos that uh, Lloyd Allen, a.k.a. Patty Lucci, and uh, her, her wife, uh, Sutiska, uh, photos that they sent to me from Southampton Animal Shelter in New York uh, of wounds where, you know, uh, for example, Tonka dragged the shelter worker into his kennel and inflicted 42 uh, wounds requiring 42 stitches. I mean, it's horrific, the, the photos. Um, you know, and I know that will happen to me. So um, anyhow, I, I've just been extremely scared for all the time. Hi, Michelle. How are you? I'm just switching back. Thank you so much as well. Um, and, and thank you for the people who are sharing my, my link right now live. I mean, I, I, like three people, three. Yeah, it's I'm, wow, this is very cool. Um, uh, I really appreciate that, you know. And again, um, okay, so I'm going to get back to the other things where I get distracted by something shiny again. Uh, and let me just fix, fix this thing here. Um, okay, so why do dogs follow us into the bathroom? Now, it's a codependency aspect of it. It's not an interdependency. It's a codependency, but it's also based on the familial connection that we have with our dog, the cohabitative aspects of that perception of what the dog, our dog, feels with us. As in, we are part of their family. We're their dad. We're their mom. We are the parent, so forth. We are 
again, we are showing them, we are parenting our dogs what we're doing. You notice that when you go sit on the couch, your dog, for those of you who allow your dogs on, on the couch, on the furniture, right? All mine, I mean, I have fur everywhere. Uh, if I don't find fur in my food, then there's something wrong. And if I find fur in my food, maybe it's because I'm a guy. I'm just like, yeah, whatever. I'm just, right? Because it's like this little piece here. I'm going to try to pick it out, this little tiny hair, like an eyelash, whatever. Uh, you know, everybody needs a little bit of fiber. So, um so, so dogs are codependent in that aspect, right? So you go, we go sit on the couch, and what is it, what happens? Our dog comes sit on it, sits on our couch. Like last night, I was just telling uh, somebody that, um, um, I didn't realize that one of my Danes was laying on the bed, and he has this tendency not to alert me when he goes pee because he sometimes falls into a deep sleep. So he actually peed right through all my mattress, like right through the, all the blankets, the cover blankets to prevent them from scratching the actual comforters and all that stuff. And I had to wash it all. So I went and I had no choice because I have to let the mattress air out and I did the laundry. And my roommate downstairs is like, why are you doing laundry at 4 a.m. in the morning? I'm like, well, right? I mean, it's pretty cool, right? Chuck's a pretty cool guy. So I'm up here uh, um, in my place here and I'm laying on the, uh, I have a chaise lounge, uh, which is kind of, kind of big and huge and all stuff. So I'm laying there, Sammy is to, oh, let me just make sure I can do it. So this is my left. So Sammy's laying to my left as well. You see the biceps on this? <laughs> and these are Great Danes, that's it. I don't go work out, these are Great Danes. Uh, I'm sure everybody who owns a Great Dane has got like these huge arms, right? We got these huge arms. So, um, um, so uh, Sammy's sleeping to my left here by my head. I got a little bed for her on the chaise lounge. And then um, Lincoln is sleeping on, at the end, and then the other another Dane sleeping right beside me, and then another Dane comes on, put starts putting his paw on me, and I'm like, oh boy, and then he gets on top as well, and they could just sleep on the other couch that I have. I have another kind of older couch. It's actually it's circa 1910 couch, which is completely ruined now. Well, it's not completely ruined, but I mean, I put a cover on, but I mean, yeah, I mean, it's a beautiful Victorian era uh, style couch. Uh, used to be. If you see some of the old photos on my thing, scroll down a couple of posts, you'll see it. It's like, wow, that's beautiful. Um, uh, but different life, right? <laughs> okay. So um, um, what the what the, the 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 dog will do? It doesn't matter if they're a Great Dane or not, right? I mean, the, Sammy's not a Great Dane, and she's a Formosa, and she's only got two feet, uh, two legs, two front legs, but she still comes right up to the couch waiting for me to pick her up, right? She's like, Dad, pick me up. So it's it's inherent, it's intrinsic in all the dogs. Codependency codependency right we go to another room and our dogs follow us we're sitting on the couch the dog sits beside us our dogs sit beside us if there's four dogs they want to all sit with us unless the dog has some sort of you know other aspects of uh low self-esteem etc these other dysfunctions that happen and then we work them towards doing that like with minky um from animal hope and wellness foundation He's that dog, that Jindo from the meat dog uh, farm who was born and raised there to the age of a year and a half. And I'm going to be posting up his other developmental videos. But, but I'll be posting it like from video number five, then video four, then three, then two, then one. So that way, if you do watch it, then you can see the progression. And I'll just, you know, I'm going to trickle it out every once in a while. Um, he, so he has no socialization. There's no domestication, no cohabitation with him. He has no ability to understand that. That's why I'm saying the scientists have no idea what they're talking about. They just see what the, the, the sugar code of everything is. They only have a 60% success rate with dysfunctional dogs. And they're like, yeah, we, we, that's it. The, the cohabitation, 10,000 plus years. But look at the other 40% that you guys are killing. Dogs like Minky, again, Animal Hope and Wellness Foundation, extensive connections all over the entire world. Los Angeles, 25, 30 million population uh, connections. You know, right? They had the, the HR 6720 bill criminalizing dog and cat meat passed by the U.S. Senate. You know, they got that, uh, uh, not uh, Jason Priestley who spoke on behalf of them at the Senate and all stuff. So they've got huge, cool connections, right? And uh, their agreement is that they're going to be sharing my work. Uh, anyways, we'll, we'll get to that some other day. <laughs> but uh, again, over 20,000 dogs Animal Hope and Wellness Foundation has worked with. Their experience fast, everything, nobody could work with them. With, with Minky, uh, their, their board of directors has um, um, a very well-known behaviors on there. Nobody could get close to him. Brought him here within 36 hours. That was it, it was easy. I was petting him, touching him, he's on the bed, everything. So it is a aspect of understanding the codependency. It is not a genetic structure. Ta-da. That's the problem, or hereditary structure, that's the problem.
they think it is, and then they go through a conjecture, which is just, oh, thank you so much, Gina. I'm just switching back here. Um, <laughs> yeah, so they go through that, right? The, the isn't. That's why I'm saying I'm, de I'm debunking it. I think actually it's kind of funny. Suzanne Fentner actually posted a guy named um, Roman Gottfried or something like that. He's a, a holistic trainer. Um, and it's kind of interesting because he's supposed to have a good following and all that stuff. And I'm not going to denigrate the guy. I've, I, I looked at a couple of his videos. This elementary, of course. Uh, there's not a lot of sophistication in it, but the interesting thing about it is that he's talking about BF Skinner and operant conditioning in the four quadrants. And it's like, dude, do you not even Google stuff like this? It's been debunked. It's been debunked. And he's talking about it and people are following him. I'm just like, wow, the sheeple is like, this is why those dogs are getting killed. Because a guy like that is working with a dog that doesn't know what they're doing. And then they're saying, this is the issue in the operant conditioning, treat training the dog, counterintuitive. Every single dog I've worked with, doesn't matter. I've been stalked, man. It's so freaking scary. None of that treats work. They're not going to take a treat. They just want to hurt. They want to hurt and they want to kill you. They want to kill me, actually. And um, it's, it's very tough yeah, environments to be in. And so that's why we're talking about these, these aspects of stuff like that. Okay. Um, so the cohabitation, et cetera, Minky and all that stuff coming in, everything. It just makes perfect sense that the domestication only comes, right? Like the, the cohabitation, the domestication only comes from the codependency that we develop with our dog. So we're sitting on the couch. Our dog sits with us, et cetera. So are you ready? How many people here are ready to find out why your dog follows us into the bathroom? And when you hear it, you're going to be like, really? Really? Hey, Tammy, how are you? Um, you're going to be like, really? Really? The, 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 the dog, the dog, is, the dog is, is following us in the bathroom and everything's happening and, and what's going on and all that stuff? We go to the bathroom, right? And for most of us, you know, because of the codependency or even the intradependency that happens with the dog, right? So we go into the bathroom. And like, for example, you know, I'll bring my cell phone in, you know, it's replaced the, the, the magazines that we read for 20 minutes, right? And we're like, okay, you know what, better, you know, finish this soon, right? So what ends up happening is to our dogs, to them, the bathroom is not a bathroom. Even though they see us pee, right? Like for us, me, a guy standing up there, I go pee, my dog sees me going pee. There's no difference than them going pee outside. If I was to go pee outside with them, they're going to be like, oh, he's just going pee or whatever. It's just normal. Our dog doesn't recognize the bathroom as the bathroom. It's only us, us arrogant human beings that think, well, this is our privacy. This is our bathroom. We need to be alone. The dog doesn't, our dogs don't care. It's just a room. And here, are you ready now? Are you ready? Are you ready? Why? They sit there and they lay beside us and they're just right here waiting for us because they think we're going somewhere. All right? Now. Because our dogs don't understand what the bathroom is. And when our dogs see us pee, it's incidental. It's a normal procedure of behavior for them. Our dogs see the bathroom as another room. And when we sit down, our dogs see us as sitting down on a chair, just like the couch, just like where I'm sitting here, it's a chair. Doesn't matter if we're peeing, standing or sitting, our dog sees us in another room that just happens to have a chair and smaller. So they think we are staying there, like we are staying on the couch, like we go to our bedroom and go to sleep. Our dog doesn't see it as a cave. Our dog doesn't say like, oh, where are you going? Where are you going? Our dogs see the bathroom as just another room. And our dogs see us sitting on the toilet as just sitting on furniture. That's why they come close. Like, where's my place, mom? Where's my place, dad? There, it's answered. Hey, Sue. Hey, Sean. Uh, I, uh, okay, I'm sorry, I, I have to stop doing that. Whoa. Uh, the, the, right? So it makes sense. It makes sense. Logic. Our dog sees the bathroom as just a bathroom. I mean, as, as just another room. They don't register the fact that, that we're going pee other than it's superficial. It's incidental. It doesn't mean anything. It's like us going into the kitchen or we're sitting on the couch. We're having, watching a movie with somebody. And then, you know, she, uh, well, you know, if she, she gets up or, you know, if I'm going out with somebody, say if I'm going out with somebody and then we're watching the movie and then she, uh, she gets up and then she goes to the kitchen. 
I'm not going to go up and go to the kitchen with her. I'm going to say, hey, would you mind maybe, you know, getting me a drink or, or, you know, whatever. Or if I get up to go to the kitchen or to the bedroom, the person I'm with, she's not going to get up either because she's like, well, he's coming back. She's definitely not going to follow me in the bathroom because she, right, the person, I'm not going to say she, I sound so rude and in, uh, I apologize, right? The, the, the person is not going to think, well, it's going to the bathroom, I got to go follow him because she understands that I'm returning, right? And we're talking about anticipation and rhetorical aspects of behavior of the dog. That's why I'm talking about the psychogenetic structure and destructuring of the dog's psychological, uh, the behavior of that dog. The psychosis, we get down to the aspects of the root behaviors of the dog, right down to the core. That's why I can do what nobody in the entire world can do with predatorial dogs. That's why I can do what Dr. Rebecca Ledger, who's got a newspaper column and, and, and consults on state, provincial, regional animal laws, can't do. Why Temple Grandin has no idea what the heck she's talking about because she is thinking dogs and animals and cows are like autistic people because she's openly stated that she's autistic. That's why I'm saying the industry, the dog industry does not like me because I make sense and they can't wrap their head around the fact that a guy like me with no education whatsoever has a natural rare talent with dogs and with people and blah, 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 blah. I'm not, I'm not denigrating my, my gift. I'm sharing it. And you hear the seriousness in my voice. I might as well be a newscaster or a talk show host. Our dogs do not see any difference in the bathroom other than it being a room. And when we sit down, our dogs think we're sitting down at a chair and they don't think anything else because they don't have the aspect of ego. There's no premeditation. There's no consequential behavior on their part other than them being reactionary. Makes sense, right? How simple. Now you know how I can down train an extremely dangerous dog that has attacked 16 people, that is 180 plus pounds, that stands over six feet, four inches tall, that has dragged a shelter worker into his kennel that's partially blind and partially deaf from being beaten. That's why I'm asking everybody to please share my work. Share this post particularly, because this particular little tiny topic will blow the heck out of the entire dog training industry. That's why when I say to the dog trainers and behaviors out there, if you really want to learn what's going on, and I know there's a few people who are watching me, and I know there's a few people who are tro not trolling, but they're just kind of like lurking because they're like, well, I can't be associated with James, and I totally appreciate it. But if you really want to know what to do with your dog, and if you really want to know the true psychology of your dog, come and ask me and watch and follow my vlogs. It makes sense. Our dogs do not see any difference in the bathroom other than it's the bathroom. I mean, other than it's, a, it's another room. The toilet is just a seat. So the question is going to be now, how do we get our dogs to stop following us to the bathroom anyways? Logic. Logic, simple logic dictates. And now what does that simple logic dictates? When we leave the bed, when we leave, that's right, when we leave the house, right, all this is organic. Remember those of you who started following me in the beginning, I was like all over the place and all over the place. Now, now I'm getting into my bailiwick. Bailiwick? Bailiwick. I'm now getting to my bailiwick. I'm getting to my future. I'm getting to what I spent over 1,400 days and over 20,000 hours alone by myself while everybody else abandoned me. All my friends, they were like, we're not coming over anymore. I mean, I've been single for so long, it's, 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 right? But I'd rather dedicate my life to saving our dogs then try to look at any emotional connection with somebody else. And maybe, you know, I'll find someone like that one day. And I trust and pray to God that that will happen. But right now, it's about saving 6 million lives annually. And that part of it comes down to it. I'm reading dogs at two tenths of a second. And if I wasn't reading dogs at two tenths of a second, I would be dead. I would be critically injured, significantly injured. And if I wasn't reading dogs at two tenths of a second, I wouldn't understand their behavior. So, if I'm sitting on the couch with a, with a date with somebody and she gets up to go to the kitchen, I'm not going to get up. I already know where she's going to the kitchen. And what I'm going to say, I'm going to say, would you mind getting me a drink? Right. You know, would that be okay? 
And then she, she gets me a drink and I go, thank you so much, right? Because we have to say thank you, even the little tiny things. We've got to be we got to be appreciative of who we're with and, and those who are spending time with us. Friends, male, female, friends, whatever it is, acquaintances, the people who hire me, I'm so grateful that they trust me on my work. And you see the reviews in the newspaper articles, but I'm still so much more that appreciative of humanity and compassion and all that. How do we stop our dogs from following us into the bathroom? Are you ready for the part two? blow your mind and it's so super dipo no uh i'm losing all these uh, comments uh uh close the close the door no no you don't have to close the door we train our dog the same way we train ourselves if i go to use a i don't know if i go to uh actually yeah in fact if i go to use a bathroom and we're watching netflix or something like that i'll say you know anyway, sorry not that netflix joke again okay um but i'll say oh I, i'm going i'm I get up and, and I'll, and, and the, my, uh, my uh, she'll say, um, oh, where are you going? I'll be like, oh, I'm going to the bathroom. Okay. So she says, she'll sit there and say, do you want me to stop the movie? Or do you want to, and I'll go, oh no, go ahead. I'll you know, watch or whatever. Or if I go to the kitchen and she'll, I'll say, do you, I'm going to go to the kitchen. Do you want anything? She goes, oh no, no. Uh, you know, if I want, I'll get it later. When we leave the house, what do we say to our dogs? Bye. I always say it in seniority as well, so they know, and then they learn the word, and we walk away like it is kids at the preschool or daycare. You just, you know, tough love. You walk out. So I say to my dogs, I'm going to the bathroom. I get up. I'm going to the bathroom. If I have to say their names because they make eye contact, I'll say the names. Then I walk over to the bathroom, and I say it in a very loud voice. And in the beginning, they follow me, right? The Great Danes, they follow me. I'm going to the bathroom, right? I'm in the bathroom. I'm in the bathroom. And while they're standing there watching me, I'm in the bathroom. Hi, guys. I'm in the bathroom. I reinforce that word. When I'm finished, I'm leaving the bathroom. And you do it, and you do it, and you do that. And your dogs learn that you're going to the bathroom. And the codependency aspect disappears because then they have much more self-confidence. The fact that we will return to the living room. How simple is that? You have dogs that come into the home that are skittish and so forth like that and all these other aspects of behavior, yada, yada, yada. And you're seeing these dogs that don't want to come into the room. They, they stay in just maybe the living room in the corner like Cody the Jindal in my cover video. It's because the dogs, our dogs, these dogs, dysfunctional, high dysfunctional dogs are not familiar with the room, with the house, the area, the apartment. They're not familiar with all the rooms. They think of abandonment issues, familial issues, interdependency issues. It's a different topic for sure. How do we address that? For those of you who own skittish, who have, oh, I'm sorry, that's so rude. For those of you who have skittish dogs, or dogs that are Velcro, every room you go into, I'm going to the bedroom. I'm going to, uh, if you have kids, I'm going to John's room. I'm going to Susie's room. I'm in Susie's room. I'm leaving Susie's room. Then your dogs learn the names of the places, just like they pee on the ground. I know why dogs pee. I know why dogs pee on top of each other. I know why dogs pee periodically. I know why male dogs lift their legs. How many of you Dane owners know that most times some your male dogs don't even lift their legs, right? That's why this industry hates me. That's why I'm asking people to share my stuff. I'm not saying like I feel like uh, uh, paranoid in that part. I'm just saying, the stuff I just talked about just now, I already knew from my work how to deal with it because I had to, otherwise I would be killed. I'm dealing not with the, the easy 60% that those guys deal with and say the dog has to die it's just because they killed another animal or something like that. I'm dealing with not the, just the 40%. My preference is dealing with the 5%. Anybody here that knows me knows I've been, I'm actively looking 
for a great gain, 150 pounds minimum, 36 inches at the withers minimum. That has attacked at least six to nine people. It's not a joke, it's not a game. I know to, to bring a dog like that, a giant dog again like that, again, amongst my other dogs, is significantly dangerous. And every single person that knows me and has worked with me, like Save Rocky, Amy from Save Rocky, the founder of Save Rocky, right? Great, uh, Great Dane Rescue, the largest one in North America. Uh, Lori from Peace Love Danes. Everyone knows I'm truthful about this. I've done it before and I'll do it again. And I absolutely despise the feeling of fear that I have inside of me. It's a horrible, horrible feeling. But I'm going to do it to save a life, to prove to the world that I'm consistent with what I do and I know what I'm doing. I don't get any media coverage anymore. I don't get any coverage on me whatsoever anymore. It's all gone now because the industry people like Dr. Ledger, and you can Google, she's done an article about me tacitly complaining about people who don't have credentials. And then saying if your dog has aggression issues, it's medically first and foremost, so you should go to your doctor, your vet. That way she circumvents the aspect of traditional tr dog trainers themselves. And then the, what bizarre is that all the dog trainers are like, oh my gosh, Ledger's so great. No, you know what's gonna happen? You, you send a dog to the vet, the vet's gonna prescribe medication, and then that vet, Prescribing medication to your dog means that you don't go to a trainer and then the trainers themselves who don't, that's how foolish these guys are. The people in my own profession, they think, oh, that's great what she wrote down. The reality is she just cut everybody off at the knees. And then those trainers get the dogs that are medicated now and the dog is in a fog, just like someone slipping a, drink in, a, a drug into your drink. Date rape drug. Your dog is predacious. predacious. They're trying to fight the fog through the primal aspects of processing. I know, I better not go on this rant. I better just start sharing the stuff that I do and just keep it like that. But it just, it just drives me nuts. How many Danes are out there that are dangerous? <laughs> Most of them are killed. A Dane that's attacked somebody because of the significant size, they don't even get to bite level five or V5 on my scale, bite level five on Ian Dunbar's elementary rhetorical dumb scale because that scale of his that the APDT and all this uh, the industry goes on and says oh my gosh we're going to uh, uh, we're going to um, um, evaluate a dog after they attacked a two-year-old child could do that that's why the industry is deliberately suppressing this and I'm not saying like it's a deep state or anything like that I'm saying that's what the industry is doing the industry is, is suppressing things on, on that sense of it and our dogs are the victims at the end of the day. There's, no, there's nobody else that's the victim. Our dogs are the ones that died. How many people do you know that have said or heard of people killing their dog because a trainer behavior has told them? I'm looking for the 5% that still is alive. Because what happens is those dogs that are in the past, we're going to say, level six, a V6 on my scale, dog kills somebody, the ability to kill somebody. So those V6 dogs all get killed because they don't respond to treats according to Dr. Ian Dunbar and the self-regulated, self-credentializing industry. So all those level six dogs get killed because they can't be fixed. I'm dealing with level 10, V10 dogs. Attacked at least 12 people. Male reactive with a prejudice. Extremely dog reactive. Every single one of them here, even Sammy, is male as dog reactive. I mean, is dog reactive. So those level six dogs, those V6 dogs, get killed. And what happens? The five become artificially six, and the fours become artificially five. And then those five that become six, they get killed. And so what turns out to be formerly level four dogs become five they become six and then the scale gets diluted downward and all these people are like oh my gosh i can do all i all this amazing stuff together with these dogs and that's a dangerous dog these are dogs that are i, you, I walk in the park with bathroom name your dog uh, let your dog know where you're going let them know i could uh, i could do that let 
let the let the industry know, right? That's what I'm saying is follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, especially the YouTube channel. It lets me get my word out. It lets me teach what's going on. You just learned why dogs go to the bathroom and follow us because they don't see it as the bathroom. They don't see it as any difference as the kitchen or the, 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 the living room or our bedrooms. They don't see any difference. It's us, human, anthropomorphization of our arrogance, our conjecture that's fumbling at 60% of the dogs. The other 40%, they're killing, they're, they're murdering other 40% of the dogs. That's why I took the shirt off so you can see the scars that I have. I can't even close this hand properly. That's as best as I can close it. This hand I can barely close as well. And it'll happen again. It's like knowing and having the cure for cancer, but nobody wants it. And the people at the big pharma don't want me to share it. I don't want to, and it's not a deep state, it's not a paranoia kind of garbage stuff like that. It's the truth. You should see some of the critical comments that people have made on my Facebook posts about the dogs I've worked with. They attack me brutally and they're all trainers or behaviorists. They've all gone after me. I've had people from the Humane Society, one of the Humane Societies on the stage, she went after me brutally. I said to her, really? How do dogs process time? Abstract memory, as I said, slivers of frames, etc. I know all that, habituation and redundancy, rhetorics, all that, I know. I can tell what a dog is going to do. Look at the Loki video. I can tell when the dog is going to turn his head forward and backwards. I had him recall with voice no treats, a skittish dog that's, that stress defecates in two and a half weeks in-house rehab. Minky had him in 36 hours, over 20,000 dogs. Now you know why the bathroom is. I know how dogs process pain. I know what the tail behavior, I know what it means when they lick left, right, and so forth. The strategy, the, and the analytical aspects that are going on in the dog. If I didn't know these things, I would be horrifically maimed. So now you know why the dogs are Velcro. The Velcro is codependency. Going to the bathroom, codependency. How do we build self-esteem? Going to the bathroom, I'm in the bathroom, I'm leaving the bathroom. Don't over talk to them, just let them know. Let your dogs know that you're doing things definitively aspect wise and they go, okay, cool. Then they learn the name of the bathroom. All right, dad's going to the bathroom. Same thing when, you know, if I'm going out with somebody or dating whatever, and she like, goes to the kitchen, where are you going? I'm going to the kitchen, you're going to, okay, could you get me a drink? Thank you. Always say thank you to people. Wait staff, doesn't matter, say thank you. If you're more conscious of the way you're treating other people, the more conscious you're going to be about yourself and the way you love the world. Bedroom, kitchen, living room, bathroom, couch, etc. all that stuff, name it. Give it a name. You gave your dog a name. Yesterday, uh, Prince, right from Sarah, and then the other day, uh, somebody else who named their dog Kevin, right? Uh, Mary, was that you? I think it was. Um, you name it. You name the rooms. It. It's not. I'm not. You're just not walking away. You're, you're. You're showing respect when you're saying I'm going to the bathroom. You're showing respect when you're going to the bedroom. I'm going to the bedroom. If you're watching a movie with somebody, and he gets up and he walks over to, and he goes to the bedroom, you're like, Where are you going? I'm going to the bedroom. Oh, uh, do you want me? To, what? Are, are you? No, I'm just going to go to the bedroom. I don't feel well. Okay, uh, let me lay down for a bit. Okay, go ahead and watch the movie. Okay, and then 20 minutes later, he comes back, sits with you, holds your hand. You know he's going to the bedroom, right? And uh, what happens if you, you know, those people like, uh, I love being with somebody. I absolutely love being with somebody. So I am codependent, overt codependent. If you see me with somebody, you, you know I'm in love with that person. If she goes to the bedroom, I'm gonna say, oh, okay, I'll turn off the TV. I'll go, well, yeah, I'll just hang out with you if you want me to. If, you, uh, if she says, oh no, I just wanna be by myself. I'm like, okay, cool, right. You know, you okay, do you need anything like that? We do this with our dogs. We share this codependency with them. So I debunked the, the cohabitation aspect from the science. I debunked the, the operant conditioning and the BF Skinner and the Lima and the Pavlov. I've debunked the bathroom aspect of it. 
think about these things. It just makes simple sense. Everything that I do with the dogs is simple. All right. How do you guys think about that? Uh, comment in the in the section below. Uh, you know. Uh, let me know what you think of what I just said because it, it just it's the only way I know. Uh, leaving the house for work, um, Daniel. You just say bye. Uh, I'll be back. And then you come back home. Hi, I'm back. Anxiety-driven issues is much more predicated on aspects of insecurity, unsecurity, low self-esteem, interdependency, codependency, um, uh, low self-confidence, a whole bunch of things specific to the dogs themselves, right? Specific to the dogs themselves. If you understand what's going on with the dogs yourself on the psychological process of it at that root core that you have never heard about anywhere in the entire world. And I'm, I could do training videos and charge 50 bucks like Learberg does who trolled me on my Facebook page saying I didn't know what I was doing I'm on my YouTube channel saying I didn't know what I was talking about. And then I asked him, how do, you pro how do dogs process time? What does tail behavior mean? And he didn't answer. He couldn't answer because he has no idea what he's talking. He's a mediocre treat trainer who, who, has, who has commercialized mediocrity. Mediocrity? Mediocracy? Mediocracy. I don't know. Right? Hey, you know what? You tune in long enough, James goes on a rant. Okay? So, um, but you see? Bathroom. Dealt with. Done. Answers already done. Cost you nothing other than just my, my request that you share and you subscribe to me on YouTube. That's it. I mean, look at my posts. Uh, these videos, I'm getting like two, three hundred... Uh, views in 24 hours now before it was like 20 views and then I start sharing my YouTube ones on top of it and I'm right so it's making sense people are are, are understanding the codependency of dogs it's like learning that the world is not flat I strive and I fight for this aspect of it this behavior I know the flat earthers, right? <laughs> we got to be careful about that part, Ben. Um, okay, so uh, you know, um, I'm gonna go on to the next one, right? Like, you know, like that's why I say when, when I, I got other topics, like why do dogs take care of socks? It's a codependency issue, low self-esteem, insecurity issues, all these stuff. Now it makes sense. Why do some dogs eat socks? Why do some dogs eat clothing? Why do some dogs eat food? Uh, I mean, stuff, I mean, toys and all that. There's reasons, and I know exactly why each and every single one. And it's so simple, but nobody wants to learn about it. It's like having the cure to cancer, and nobody wants to have the cure because the, other farm, the big pharma says no, we don't want it. It's just the industry, the dog training, and the dog pet industry in 2018 in North America was valued at almost seven zero seventy billion dollars. There's a reason. Look how long it took CBD oil to be. Uh, permitted um, oh actually I should plug hip my pet phenomenal company they're there great product helped keep Nero alive for almost three oh, well two and a half years when his back end failed they were like oh we heard about it we want to help you Lisa Labrador who helped me she's got over a million followers on Facebook and all her social apps uh, her husband works for Disney he, 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 he I, I got to see an Academy Award and Golden Globe in person I got to see where John Lasseter, who's no longer with him because of all that Me Too, because uh, he was a, you know, anyways, I'm not going to get that part. I got to see what a real Academy Award looks like. I was like, holy, I couldn't touch it, but I was like, wow. It was absolutely amazing to see that in person. And it looks exactly like it is on TV. I'm like, oh, wow, no, we're not worthy, not worthy. Um, but yeah, so Hemp My Pet product helped when Nero's back end was going, and it was about, 10 years, nine months, and 10 years, 10 months of age. CBD oil kept him alive for two plus years on top of that. He was able to walk and run around and everything. And then I'm going to do a post as well, how to prepare yourself for your dog's death. Not a bucket list, a real list, a real way of connecting to your dog's soul and how to prepare your dog for their own death. And yes, Dogs not understand the concept of death, and I, I, I know why. But how to prepare ourselves for our dog's death 
when it comes time for us to do so, right? And we are having to kill our dog. It's not euthanasia in the sense of it, in my mind, because it, it's something that we have to do. It's, that's the toughest act of love we can ever do. More important than that is to prepare our dog for their death when that time comes. And the simplicity of it is going to make you cry. That picture of Nero, where he's laying, here he's, um, he's laying on the, uh, the, the wagon. And those words in that frame, I looked for the right photo. I looked for the right moment to take. And that photo was taken about two months before his death. And it helps ease me through the transition. So I'll get to that one of these days when I have the strength to do so. True love, human or animal, true love is unbelievable. It's what we all crave. Is the most absolute gorgeous thing in the world. It's the thing that I've prepared myself to die for. With Nero, with any of these guys that come in, like I said to people who hire me, I fall in love with your dog, and I fall in love with your dog more than you have fallen in love with your dog in the true sense of it. That's why I can read them, and that's why you yourself can read it, and then I show people how to do it themselves, and they see it. They see it, and it's, it's the most gorgeous thing in the world. Okay, I, I don't think Deborah's going to have too much of an upset what she said uh, about Leo, right? This is the dog who's nine years of age, reactive his whole life, got attacked three times in the other days, just got attacked by, almost got attacked by a German Shepherd. One session. And so uh, Deborah hires a, a dog walker, a great person, phenomenal person, Susan is her name. And she's, she wrote down, uh, hi, James. I'm just at Deb's, which is, you know, Leo's mom, and am overjoyed with how calm and happy Leo is. I cannot get over the difference in his behavior, and I know in my heart how safe he feels. I cannot tell you how impressed I am with your work. I'm trying to get a friend of mine uh, to, uh, about a German Shepherd that bites. I'm like, whatever. Oh, yeah, well, you know, these are things that we do to help save our furry loves. And that's why it drives me nuts when people like Kugo Rescue goes and starts going from me to a treat trainer now. The simplicity escapes these people. They don't understand it, so they brute force it now. They sacrifice the health of our dogs, the mental health of our dogs for their own banal perspective. Like I said, it's a horrible feeling for me to feel like I have the cure for the most incurable disease. Six million dogs are being killed. That's why I'm so passionate. That's why I get so upset sometimes when I see these dumb things being said by some of the top people in the industry. All right. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to try to do, I'm going to try to do a screen share. Once I do a screen share, I won't be able to come back online because I, it doesn't allow me to go back online. It, it just, it just, it, it sticks it into um, that, and then I'll end up. I'll have to end the, um, I'll have to end the set, uh, this vlog, which is fine because I'm at like an hour and twenty minutes now. Um, but I'll have to end the vlog, and then um, let me see if I can get this to go through here. Okay, um, so I'm gonna go to a video. I'm gonna go to the Loki video that I'm talking about. Uh, I talked to you about it might get a little bit loud, and uh, I want to thank the people who've, sus who've subscribed to me recently. Uh, I'm now up to 440 subscribers. Uh, I need a thousand subscribers um, to to be able to be uh, qualified by YouTube for like I need 4,000 hours. So any of you who are watching YouTube, you know, please just just watch my live vlogs and just leave it on play, uh, leave the sound on, but 
put your speakers on mute and just let it play overnight and just help me build up the hours. Um, subscribe to my channel. I mean, you see a lot of people who don't even have any subscribers to their channels, uh, to their, 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 their subscriptions because most of them are trainers and behaviors that are following me and they let me know that. I can't be associated with you, James, publicly because of our ethics, our professional ethics. But I'm following you, just so you know, I have your support. And some of them come after me publicly, like Sheila Begg. They come publicly after me, and I, I, I forgive that part. I accept that part because, end of the day, if she learns, if these people learn how to do it with their own dogs and understand from me, that because she's going to go out and say, oh, you know why the bathroom happens like this? She's going to look like a rock star. I'm not looking for the fame or fortune. I'm looking for the dogs themselves to be understood and our dogs to be saved. Now it makes sense why your dog goes in the bathroom. It's not because their nuts are crazy. They just don't see any difference other than you're just traveling. All right, so um, let me just go down to some of these videos here. I'm gonna go to, uh, if I can find it here. I'm gonna go to playlist. Um, okay, so I'm going to switch myself off here to screen share. I'm really hoping I can do that, and I don't think I can. Oh, darn. Darn. Um, how many people want me to screen share? Uh, yeah, so I can't do it at all now. Um, this sucks. Uh, let me just see. Maybe I can do an edit on the post because I would just, uh, oh, oh, maybe, maybe. Settings. Interactive. Okay, no. Uh, remember, like, like you remember anybody who was watching the vlog a couple of days ago when I was helping somebody uh, off of Twitter? And he's like, oh, you know, I'll help you with the social media? Nothing. Disappeared, right? Once you get somebody's helped and they're done, they don't care, right? So, you know, it kind of makes me feel, uh, uh, you know, it's hurtful for sure, right? Because people gush and all that stuff. I'm, I'm doing things that people, you know, nobody cares about the longevity of dogs. They're just caring about themselves for that time, that instance since time, and it really sucks. Okay, uh, so now you know why the bathroom is, you know why the that part. One day we'll get to the uh, pain aspect of, uh, of how dogs uh, do that, how dogs, how dogs know and why dogs can tell that you're dead, or well, not me, but why dogs can tell when, when somebody's dead, why they sniff, all these parts of it. You know why a dog comes up to you and they smell your, your face and which direction and all that? They're smelling on your face. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually end this, and then I'm going to restart another live broadcast, but it's going to be a screen share off of my YouTube channel. So that way you can see the Loki video, and all you're going to do is hear my voice. Hopefully, you just hit, you'll be able to hear me. Uh, if you can't hear me, just start commenting saying, I can't hear you. But uh, if that's the case, then I'll, I'll try to work it on that way, okay? So uh, everybody, uh, I'm going to end it now, and I'm going to start up in two minutes' time. And then I'm going to go to the Loki video, okay? Thank you so much for following me. Please share this post. Teach the world why dogs go to the bathroom. The simplest thing now. All right? Talk to you in a few minutes.